Hi, I'm Chad Bettis, author of The Disciple Making Parent, and this is my audio blog where I read some of my blog posts in audio format for your convenience. In today's episode, I'm going to take you back to what we as a family did, and we're specifically going to talk about how we handled Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, and the Tooth Fairy. (laughs) This is one of our more popular posts. Sharon and I are way past the stage in our parenting, but I thought it might be interesting to write about how we handled Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, and the Tooth Fairy. You know, the issue is not at the heart of the gospel. I was brought up on Santa until age six. One of my Christmas Eve nights that we were driving home from my grandmother's house, I looked out at all the homes in my city, and I just knew there was no way Santa could visit every house in the world in one night. And so I think that was the night I asked my parents. But up until that point, I had been brought up on Santa, and I'm following the Lord today. However, anytime we talk to our children about someone who knows if we're sleeping or awake, is omniscient, who knows if we've been good or bad and expects us to be good, then we ought to think beyond the surface. In addition, there's a subtle danger of learning about two invisible people, Jesus and Santa. When you find out later one is not real, well, then maybe your mind goes and thinks the other is not real as well. As the caption on the poster reads, children, one day you will learn everything about Santa Claus. On that day, remember everything that the adults have told you about Jesus. Obviously, a skeptic trying to cause us to disbelieve in Jesus. Well, with this in mind, our hard and fast rule was We will never, ever lie to our children, or anyone else for that matter. Never. So when I tell them the truth about things they cannot see, I don't want them to have any doubts about the truthfulness of their dad or mom. I want them to have complete trust in our integrity. So how did our family handle Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, and the Tooth Fairy? Let me give you seven principles that we followed. Number one, we never took our children to talk with Santa or the Easter Bunny. There are no Christmas cards in his lap. Number two, we never brought Santa up in conversation. If the children brought it up, then we'd talk about it. Number three, we used passive language. Christmas is coming. There will be presents under the tree. Put your tooth under your pillow and there will be some money there the next morning. There was something a little more fun with the passive voice. We didn't say Santa will bring presents. We didn't say we will bring presents. We just said there will be some presents. It was mysterious. It was teasing. Number four, because we used passive language, by the time they asked, who who are these dressed up men? They could also handle the trust of the truth. We said something like, some children believe that Santa will bring their presents. We don't want to spoil Christmas for them. This is our secret. Number five, when asked by another adult or child what they hoped Santa would bring, we told them simply to reply with what they wanted for Christmas. (laughs) So I remember they still had some times when they had that deer in the headlights look, and we, we just repeated the question, honey, tell Mrs. Smith what you want for Christmas. Number six, we resolved not to be Christmas haters. As a family, we enjoyed The Grinch Who Stole Christmas or Elf, The Polar Express. We had great fun with the secular aspects of the holiday. And number seven, we wanted, though, the focus to remain on Jesus, even as we added a little fun to life with presents or chocolate eggs. You know, these principles served our family well, and we still had great fun. So I commend them to you to think about. In fact, on a couple of nights, the quote-unquote tooth fairy slipped in his duties. The tooth was still under the pillow the next morning. So one of my daughters wrote a note to remind the tooth fairy. With a twinkle in her eye, she handed the note to me and said, Dad, could you give this note to the tooth fairy? She forgot to come by last night. And she quickly turned to walk away with a knowing smile. Let's honor the Savior this holiday season. Today's post can be found at thedisciplemakingparent.com. And if you're right in the middle of parenting young children, you might be interested in our resource that's just for you. 
It's entitled Parenting with Confidence, and it includes foundational biblical teaching about parenting, as well as we discuss wisdom issues like consequences and rewards and character training. So if you'd like more information, visit parentingwithconfidencestudy.com. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord bless your Christmas season.